Welcome to the Oxen Group Nightly. My name is David Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Oxen Group. We're a financial analysis and investment ideas newsletter. You can check us out at www.theoxengroup.com for all of your investment needs. For today's Oxen Group Nightly, we're going to be looking at our market wrap-up for Monday and checking out some of the positions we entered and exited today. As well as we'll be also looking at some of our other portfolios, including our trader Giorgio Ferrer's Giorgio's Corner portfolio and our long-term investing portfolio, the Extended Value Portfolio, or as we like to call it, the EVP. I'll also be looking at tomorrow's forecast, and as always, please check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. Uh, well, the market had a pretty rough start to the week. Um, financials were the leader to the downside today. Uh, a lot of analysts came out over the weekend and said the stress tests were basically... Uh, for lack of better words, BS, and um, they didn't show what really is going on in Europe. Um, they weren't um, accurately uh, painting the picture. Um, fears over the debt ceiling are continuing to linger. Um, the market really didn't have anything to rally on this morning. Halliburton earnings were decent, but not really anything. It's not a company that kind of can really move the market. Um, you know, the dollar was strengthening on continued European fears, which was hurting equities and commodities, um, and then commodity-related stocks. Um, reaction to the stress test was pretty much negative. Um, and, you know, we, we really need positive news to outweigh the debt ceiling crisis, the European crisis right now, in order to have upside. Um, you know, there was no advancements over the weekend in the debt ceiling crisis. Um, and uh, Obama did a veto a bill today coming out of the House. So overall, it's, it was not a really a great day in the market. Um, however, we were able to actually take advantage of some uh, opportunities we saw in the market today. And actually, uh, we went uh, five for five on the day with our positions. Um, we'll start out, oh, sorry, we'll start out by just, I wanted to show you this quick chart. Um, you know, it does look like people do care about the Washington. This is a, a, a survey done in Citigroup in July. Um, this early part of July, asking people what do they think the biggest risk to the economy in the next 12 months, and they say government policy uh, handedly. Um, the other one was geopol geopolitical. Um, you know, so you're basically wet weighing, the market weighing on the market is the debt ceiling, and weighing on the market is the European crisis. You solve the debt ceiling crisis, and you see this fear start to really come down a lot. Thus, we get a rally in the market. I expect a huge rally off the debt ceiling crisis being resolved, and I do expect that will happen within the next week to two weeks. Um, market started on a sour note, you know, quickly dropping the financials and the dollar. Rebounded, though, um, pretty much solidly throughout the afternoon. Uh, got a lot of bargain, bargain prices on some pretty good stocks um, that have, have declined over the last uh, week and a half here. Um, and as we move into the earnings season, I'd like to put some chips on the table on some of those companies that continue to outperform the market and continue to do well. Um, some of the tech companies like Apple and IBM, and some of your, uh, you know, your energy companies, some of your healthcare companies. Um, but as I said earlier, we were able to take advantage of today and go five for five on the market. Uh, we started out with, uh, we'll start out with the UCO. This is the uh, ProShares Ultra Dow Jones UBS Crude Oil ETF. Uh, follows the futures on Dow Jones. Very good um, ETF to to follow oil prices. Uh, I think it's better than USO. I think it's better than um, any of your other ETFs out there. Um, and it falls directly right in line with crude prices. Um, and it had a uh, not a good day overall, 2.9% drop, but we were able to buy at 42.11, um, sort of close to the bottom of the day, and it really kind of had a real nice afternoon, rallied off the $95 line, kind of held some resistance at 96, held the $96 line, and we were able to exit um, half the position for 1.5% gain. Um, and we're definitely looking for this to continue up. Um, there's a pattern that I've noticed in, in the oil market. If, if a Monday is uh, comes after kind of a three-day decline, five, and here's a change. Today we open up higher, but rally three days into it, three-day pullback. So one, two, three, four, five. Now here, this is a three-day rally, so it doesn't really count. But you go back one, two, three, four, five. And here's a change. It really is half higher, but rally three days into it, three-day pullback. So one, two, three, four, five. Now here, this is a three-day rally, so it doesn't really count. But you go back one, two, three, four, five. And here's a change. It really is happening, though, but rally three days into it. Three day pullback. So one, two, three, four, five. Now here this is a three day rally, so it doesn't really count. But you go back one, two, three, four, five. And here's a change. What really is happening though here is that uh, oil is trading in drastically tight ranges right now with 94.95 area 
being a bottom and 98 to 99 being a top. We've been talking about this over the last couple of weeks here. I'm going to continue to stay that way until we see a fundamental change in something, um, whether it be uh, supply levels, whether it be uh, you know, somebody coming out saying they're going to increase supply, Libya coming back on the page and saying, you know, they've got supply back to 100%. Something changes fundamentally. There's not going to be much change, I think, in that range. I think we're going to be pretty tightly there between 95 to 99. I think that range is actually probably going to tend to actually move towards the upside, go to 96 9 to 100, 97 to 101, etc. Um, we also were able to play Apple today for an extremely awesome options day for us. We bought the $370 weekly calls towards the opening of the day today at $885. Um, we were able to sell them for two exits at $950 and then again at $1120. Um, and that those options went even higher um, after we exited. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of clients saying, no, let's hold into tomorrow. We got $375. We're going to hit that tomorrow. Well, we almost hit $375 today, pulled back from that line. I mean, you know, you look at this chart and you're playing with fire continuing to think this can go up. I, I do agree that we'll probably have another good day in Apple tomorrow, but I think it's actually going to be a market-based rally tomorrow. Um, I think if we have a down day tomorrow, I do think you'll see some pullback in Apple. I don't think that this can continue up. I think you'll see some profit take. In addition to our Apple play, we exited CF for more than 4% gain. We exited a Winnebago short sale for more than a 3% gain. And we exited FAZ for more than 2% gain. We were long on CF past from last week uh, as our top pick for earnings season. Um, in Winnebago, it looked like a great short sale off a high yesterday, uh, over this past week. And then we were uh, shorting the financials coming into today. Uh, for Giorgio's corner, he entered a new equity trade in General Mills today. He has three open income positions, uh, U.S. Steel, Medco Health Solutions, and Exxon Mobil. And then we also launched coverage this, over this week on 12 new fast and casual dining companies, including Tim Hortons, Panera, Jack in the Box, and McDonald's. We put those four on there. Um, there's other ones, including you know, Chipotle, uh, Yum Brands, etc. Um, but Tim Hortons and Panera were our two top buy picks. Um, Jack in the Box was our top sell. And McDonald's is our top hold. And we think it's a great hold um, for your, for your um, portfolio. Great dividend. Uh, a company with low risk, um, a lot of upside potential still in the stock. Um, we don't think it's a great value place. We don't think it's a buy, like go overweight on it, but we do think entering an equal weight position on it's not a bad idea. For tomorrow, uh, I thought we got a good rally into the close. I think there um, will be a lot of attention drawn away from the government with earnings and data tomorrow. Um, you see there we got all those companies reporting earnings, uh, lots of different sectors and industries covered. Um, that can give us great boosts to the market, help bring up some different sectors that will um, help the NASDAQ and the Dow and the S&P. Um, housing starts and building permits tomorrow. If they're good, that helps. If they're bad, I don't think it really can draw that much away as no one expects those to be good anyways. Um, and that's going to do it for today. This is www.theoxygroup.com. Email us, call us, become a part of our 70% plus accuracy in picking stocks, which is actually a conservative estimate.